Most people recognise me as a freestyle footballer, the girl with all the skills. But this right here is not about freestyle, it's not about football, in fact it's not about sport at all. This is all about real estate. My name is Liv Cook and welcome to my first property development. Let's check it out. Here it is, Mum. My first development project. What do you think of it, first of all? From the outside. Yeah, be honest. Rough. <laughs> it's a mess, isn't it? It's worse inside, come in. It's currently a three bed, but I'm going to be converting it into a six bed ensuite HMO. I can't believe that the guy lived in here. So I bought this from a 95 year old man who'd been like in the army, an amazing guy. But you know what old people can be like, they're like reluctant to move, they're fine, they're fine. But living in this at 95, that's not fine. I'm glad for his sake that he sold it to me and he's gone to a home because this is not good for anybody. But we're gonna fix it up, it's gonna be fine. Now it's on a different title, but I do own both. So the land there, leading up to the tree behind our fence, that is mine as well, and I'm gonna make it into the car park for the property. Yeah, what do you think then? Yeah, it's a big project, but it can be very nice. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of work. But honestly, I'm so excited about this project. Like, I can't wait to complete, get the keys, then get all the builders in and start ripping it out to renovate it and make it a fantastic six bed HMO. It's gonna be awesome. Ah! I am so excited. So the builders have been in yesterday and started the process. They've been ripping the property out. And today is the first time I'm gonna see my development in progress. Ah! I've got my little helmet as well. Let's go! It was a mess before, now it's just yeah. more of a mess. So it's not a complete surprise. No. We're gonna move that wall in the corridor over a bit to give us the access to the both bedrooms and get that ensuite in. Mm -hmm. There's uh, that outbuilding, we're just gonna take one of the walls out. Uh, and make it a larger bedroom. And this is where like, a lot of people would probably miss there's another bedroom you can get in if they don't consider using the outbuilding. Mm. Out well, we're extending room. that, aren't we? Yeah. Because yeah. you don't need planning to extend that bit, so. No. Because it's already, it's Perfect. Like it already exists. All right, so we're ripping that ceiling down. Yeah. Then that's going to become the bedroom. We're going to extend it as well, right? Yeah, yeah. and then put the ensuite at the back. All right. And they're ripping it now, right? Yeah. yeah I want to see it. I want to so. see it. Helmet up. I'm nervous. Oh. Oh, yeah, I think. What's that noise? Mm. Oh, it's, it's a, a bee. bee. Okay. What's that okay, is it, if it comes at me? I'll protect you, don't worry. Yeah. The upstairs is the same way as that up as here. Like, mm -hmm. everything's getting ripped out, but the bathroom is a bit of a mess. So that one's going to be... That, that was bad condition. Wait till yeah. you see it now. Yeah, really? Yeah, wait okay. till you see it now, it looks great. a bit of the yeah. already existing yeah, bathroom for this room. room and this is Sweet. what confuses people when they see the floor plans they're like mm. where are you getting an extra bedroom in here yeah and yeah it's yeah, yeah. Be a double bedroom yeah but obviously you just nick a bit of space from here and yeah. there you go you've got a nice big bedroom i really can't get bedroom. over how fast this is happening they literally came in yesterday and that wall's already down 
I knew you'd like it. <laughs> of course I like it. Progress. I love it. I don't just like it. I love it. In my element. Nearly getting attacked by spiders. But happy. Now, when it comes to property investment, there are two things that you've always got to keep in mind. The first is what you can't change about the property, and that is location and size. Now, the location of this property is perfect. It's in the Manchester area, so it should see great capital appreciation over the next few years and beyond. And as for the size, it's perfect. It's a Victorian style property, so we've got the high ceilings, the spacious rooms, all making it perfect for a conversion to a HMO. Now, what's a HMO, you might ask? HMO stands for Housing Multiple Occupants, meaning I'm gonna be renting out all six different rooms to different tenants from different households. And the second thing that you can't forget when it comes to property investment is formulas over feelings. Too many people invest in properties they like the look of, or they might want to live there in 20 years, or the parents are giving them a discounted rate and they want to help them out. But the truth is, those aren't always great investments. You can invest incorrectly in property and lose money, but not if you stick to formulas over feelings. Let's check my formulas out. Yes, can I have that pen? ROI, 210%. Bang. So, the basic numbers. Purchase price, £164,995. GDC stands for Gross Development Cost, and that's the cost of the works that we're doing to the property, £70,000. GDV stands for Gross Development Value, and that's essentially the value of the property once we're finished. I estimate that at £315,000, and that's being conservative, to be honest with you. I think we'll see like in excess of £320,000. But I like to be conservative, not optimistic, especially when it comes to working with numbers. Then with them three basic numbers, we can work out what's called our net profit percentage. Now this is how you assess if a development is good or not. Now you can see here with my profit of the development divided by the GDV, we get a 25.4% net profit percentage. Now that's pretty good. Most developers go for 21, 22, 23%. Me, I work with 23% or over. Now. With that percentage, we can see that it would be a great development. So we could buy this property, do it up, sell it and profit £80,000. But that's not what I want to do. I'm trying to build for the long term. So I'm going to be keeping this property, even when the work's done, I'm then going to be refinancing it. So remortgaging it, which I'll be able to do because you can do that after holding it for six months. I'll be then pulling out most of my money because I'll get a loan to value ratio of 75%. So LTV, 75% meaning 25% deposit allows me to pull all my money out except for £5,444, which isn't a lot really to then retain a property of £315,000. It's pretty incredible. It means we've got an ROI of 210%, which is roughly about six months to get that five and a half grand back because I am letting it out via social housing, meaning the rent per calendar month is £2,040. A mortgage repayment will be £1,085, so my profit is £955 per month. It's an incredible deal, and I'm very, very excited. <laughs> I like now, because we can really see the place starting to come together with all the framework going up and stuff. And Builders leaving the rubbish everywhere. <laughs> but yeah, it's looking good. So this is where someone that hates me online has come through and they're like, that's Liv's property. I'm throwing a brick at it. And uh, yeah. In fact, you know what? I was joking there, but they might have actually done that because the floor's damaged here. So it's like something's come through and hit it. Whoa, 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 S slow down, slow down. 
And is he all right? He's not in hospital anymore. Tell him to meet me there. I am literally 30 minutes away. All right, speak to you in a bit. Bye. <sighs> I'll give you the bad news and the bad news. <laughs> <laughs> the bad news you've, you, is we've got dry rot. Mm -hmm. Yep. And with dry rot, that is the, that's one of the serious types of rot you can get. It, yeah. it basically, it can spread all the way through the property and eat all the timbers and it all collapses. The whole building? It could do, yes. <laughs> but, <laughs> but what, yeah. But we've, we, we, you've got dry rot, but, mm -hmm. we've, but because we went out to find the localised areas of it, yeah. we can treat it so it won't, the whole building won't fall down, <laughs> which is a bit of relief. <laughs> but, but, I might. <laughs> but obviously, it's going to cause a delay and time mm -hmm. and money because we've got to take the timbers out that are, that are okay. rotten. We've got to replace them with new timbers or new steels and also treat the area. Strange enough, uh, dry rot is a fungus. So you have to kill the fungus. It comes from like excess moisture, right? It comes from excess... And then it yeah. attaches onto the wood. Yeah, it, it comes from excess moisture, but also an, a, a, an, an ideal temperature, so it's a bit warm. Mm -hmm. So the fungus, like a mushroom, it's not really a mushroom, but it grows like a mushroom and it grows along the timber. And, the, and it actually uses the timber as a food source to grow, and that's why the, the timber. little snake. So yeah, eating off my home. <laughs> it's definitely treatable and everything else. It's just, right. it's just one of them problems you get with older properties. I'm very glad that you're all right, by the way. Oh, thank you. When you yeah. weren't very well. I know. Honestly, I, I, when everything was going on and I was hearing about dry rot, I wasn't even bothered. I was like, is, is Dave all right? You yeah, know? thank. Yeah, to, it was it, actually. I don't want to go through that ever again. But mm. yeah. Having 10 litres of oxygen per hour pumped into you just to keep you alive is not the best no, thing. No, it's not. Please don't die on me. No, I won't. I not long, not until at least we finish you. this one. You know, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. it's not even about the property. Yeah. Like, I think yeah. things like that put things into perspective. It does. It, like, no no property. I'd rather see this deal yeah. collapse and yeah. we all go bankrupt and you're yeah. fine yeah. than, I, you know, you, something you know, happened to you. Yeah, it's, made, it's definitely made me realise that I've got to give some me time again. Yeah. You can work as much as you want and, earn, and, and get as much as you want, but if, mm. you can't, if, you're not, if you're not there to enjoy it, what's the point? Health before wealth. Yeah. There it is. The second problem, the beast of a tree. Now, the thing is with a tree, however tall it is, is however long the roots are, which is causing us issues because you can see down here some roots. So they have grown all the way to the property. And this where I'm standing is where the toilet and outhouse used to be. Yeah. And because it was an outhouse, they didn't have foundations for it. So the plan was to knock it down and extend to make our third bedroom, right? With yeah, an ensuite. Yeah, that was, that was our plan. However, you can see here, that's the foundations of the property. The outhouse didn't have any. So it's causing a few little things. Yeah. We got two options. We can either do two meters, mm -hmm. But if you imagine going two meters down here where your foundations are here, we're going to undermine the whole of the house. Yeah. So we can't go on two meters. So we do what's called a raft. So we, we, we have to found a, sh a shallow foundations at high level on gravel. So we have to dig, we've dug 600 mil away of the, or two foot, or 600 mil away of the, of the ground and then built it with stone to generate a raft. And then there'll be concrete poured on top of there and the concrete will fall down into, the, into this area. And so all the foundations are, are high up. Mm -hmm. so, so we're not undermining the existing building. Yeah, but we didn't know there no. weren't foundations when we knocked no. it down, did we? No. So this was going to be a simple plan, yeah. knocking the outhouse down and extending it because yeah. because the building already, exi already existed, we didn't need planning permission for it. Yeah. So it was essentially increasing the size of the property without the headaches, yeah, we're pretty much. Basically, re just rebuild the walls back on the existing foundation, but there was yeah. no foundations to rebuild back exactly. on. Exactly. So now we actually are doing yeah. an extension, really. Yeah. That's why it's important to be conservative with your numbers and not optimistic with your GDV. Yeah. That's a lesson that we've learned here. Well, that we already knew, yep. didn't we? Yeah, you already knew, but contingency as well. That's the Ooh, best. nearly went. <laughs>so you may have heard me mention a few times already that once the development's done i'm going to be letting the property out via social housing and you might be thinking what is that why are you doing it or you may even be thinking that's a terrible idea because unfortunately social housing does have a very negative stigma surrounding it so i met up with the owners ed and lucy and just hearing their story changed everything for me it went from being a business deal something that i wanted to do to something that I felt I had to do and needed to do. It excited me, I felt good about it. 
So I want you to hear their story and yeah, let, let's just go, let's just go and speak to them. I'm going to let them do the speaking. Come on. So this is Ed, Ed Smith. He is the managing director of A New Approach. He is 20 years clean and sober in recovery. Uh, and Ed basically is the absolute heartbeat of this organisation. Lucy is the lead therapist, an amazing therapist, uh, a truly inspirational therapist who's always open to learning. Um, and she brings that real real energy to the therapy team. Oski is the rehab dog who lives at home, who has a problem with cheese yeah. and ham. Um, who he spent his whole life around the rehab, he comes into work every day. Um, just for today, he's not picked up cheese. So today. we just tell him, <laughs> keep it in the day, Osk, you're doing great. And I suppose the journey of why we do what we do comes from uh, my recovery, I suppose. I am uh, an ex-addict. Um, I've been clean and sober for 20 plus years. Uh, and I've been in rehabs, uh, I've been in quite a, couple, a few rehabs along the way. We basically uh, now have the capacity and the ability to take people from what is essentially street homeless, rough sleeping, and take them right in to accommodation and create a journey, a staged journey, right the way through into at the end, at the end of the, the pathway is a residential rehab, therapeutic community, an extended recovery community accommodation. So a real end to end from street homeless to clean and sober, drug and alcohol free, in work, having your life back, getting on with things. We have a treatment centre, which is the building we're in today, which is a 10 bed, 24 hour. People come in and stay with us for 12 weeks and then they move out. And recovery is not a short game. It can't be solved in this building. This building gives people the opportunity to, to understand who they are, what they want, and the work that needs to go in moving forward to, to maintain recovery and to stay emotionally healthy. So what we provide afterwards, we have a secondary treatment centre, which is a, an, another large building like this, which allows clients to really figure out where they're going in life and kind of in a really managed way, as opposed to suddenly I'm straight out, I'm in a house, I've got loads of bills, da da da. And then after secondary, that's where um, the connections uh, with you live have come in, because that's where then they go into what we would call, I suppose, third stage really, but it's part of that recovery community whereby we have kind of two, three, four and five bed houses where people go and live who are clean and sober, who are just getting on with their lives then. Uh, they, 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 they live with other peers who've been through a similar process to them and they just start to engage with life then, working, doing voluntary, engaging back in education again if that's what they want to do and getting on with life again and then, you know, we say you can stay there for as long as you need to. We just find there's a natural attrition then of, you know, some people it's six months, some people it's two, three years, it just depends on I suppose that naturally when they're ready to move on. You know, we sit in group all the time and I always say to them, you don't even know how much potential you, you have right now. Sat in this group room, feeling all hopeless and all helpless and like there's too much water under the bridge and there's too much crap gone on. You're not even aware of how much potential you've got. If you put all of that energy and effort that you put into your using into something positive, you know, it's amazing what could happen. Private sector and accommodation is absolutely essential. I couldn't deliver this model without landlords like Liv with properties that are, uh, are happy to invest and put them to a really high standard and then lease them to us. I think there isn't that much property, that's the reality of it. So our reliance on social housing, it would make it really difficult. Um, 
we need that property coming in from the private sector. Morning guys. Morning. Yeah, you. Dave, how are we? Stressed out me up. What's this about a wall falling down? Right, so when we took these lintels out above this roof here, all this back of the brickwork mm. is just literally falling. So we have to set it all out, the inside skin as well, and rebuild it. And that was because of the dry rot? Yeah. Yeah. It's been a nightmare that, hasn't it? It has. It's ravage this side of the building and the, and the front side of the building mm. but it's due mm. to it's due to extensive leaking over years because mm. i've no maintenance done this if we could tell that as soon as i got it it was a mess wasn't yeah. it how he was living in this place beyond me so apart from the wall nearly falling down well nearly falling down it did fall down didn't it pretty much, pretty <laughs> we're much. on track because last time i came like these walls weren't even here, this was just a timber frame. It was, Actually. yeah, it was a stub work frame. Since then, you've had first and second fix electrics go in, you've had second fix joinery, mm. board and skin, both sides. Bathrooms are partially fitted. Mm -hmm. I'm just waiting on some tiles yeah. on Monday, hopefully, we can start tiling the bathrooms. When's the decorator in that in? They're in a week next Monday. Okay. I'm only going to get them in once the downstairs has been skimmed. Mm -hmm. Plasters are back next week. Cool. So I don't want the decorators in until, until they've pushed mm. through. Yeah, and yeah, you can yeah. start up here, make the way downstairs. And nice. And that's when it'll all start to look like a home. That's the one. A HMO, to yeah, be specific. it will. It's nice now because you can actually see like where the bedroom is. And then obviously this is a bathroom. It's coming together. It's taking shape. It's good. It's good. I can't believe that wall fell down, literally came with the structural engineer and he said, yeah, yeah, it's dry rot, but it's fine, nothing's gonna collapse. And then bang, the wall fell down. So, well, I've got to um, head to Los Angeles, but when I get back, can we I should come? be done. Yeah, come with me, <laughs> come with me. If you I carry my do, case, I it's a bit heavy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not been that bad, come on. But yeah, next time I come, when I come back, I mean, it should be done. Pretty much. Pretty not much. pretty much. Pretty much. Done. Pretty not much. pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> I need more certainty than that. It's going to be yeah. done. Yeah, we should be. We should yeah, be. will be. We're, we're, on, we're on target. Will be. Will we'll be. <laughs> <laughs> right, Cheers, I'll see you later, Dave. Okay, okay. Cheers. To the first property development being complete. What do you think then? Because obviously, Dad, you've not even seen this. It's to a really high standard, isn't it? I'm yeah. surprised at how good it is, to be honest with you. Thanks, I was nervous for what you'd say. What do you think, Mum? I know you called it rough yeah, before. It's not rough anymore. I know, the kitchen's better than yours. Look at the, look at the worktop. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> But do you remember, Mum, because you saw it before it was even, yeah. before we even did any yeah. work. This was just a wall and it was like proper old, really old yeah. kitchen. Now, it's like an extension because we've developed the outhouse. Yeah. So that's yeah. our first of six ensuite bedrooms. Oh, she wants a new kitchen and the shower. Yes. <laughs> oh, we've got a good shower, haven't we? But yeah, it's nice. Yeah? yeah? Come on then, I'll show you around. Yeah. This is communal area. Yeah, so this is a communal living room, yeah. communal kitchen. It's a nice space really, isn't it? I like the windows as well, they're nice and big. You get like that Victorian feel for all the light to come in. It's nice, nice and clean, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Fresh. Neutral colours. Yeah. Well, with it being a HMO, I didn't want to put people off starting putting pink on walls and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> big painting of myself. <laughs> you know I would. I think the one above oh, yeah. might be bigger, but again, nice ensuite, big windows, obviously need a clean yet, but. Do you know though, one thing, the biggest lesson I've learned in this has been communication with the neighbors, because there was a lot of rumors going around that weren't accurate, and it caused a lot of headaches, and it caused, you know, the surrounding people stress. And that's not what I want to do. Like with this development, I want to be building the community up. I want to take this property that was run down make it better, help get people off the street, make it safe for everyone and just build everything up. So the fact that, you know, I had people coming to me stressing and saying like, 
they're worried, they don't know what it is, they think I'm housing ex-convicts, all of that, you know, that, that upset me a little bit, but you hopefully when at least this video comes out as well, that can help add clarity to the situation. On your next build, you should set yourself some key performance indicators against yeah. social values. Yeah. about yeah. what you can put back into the community. Look at him. You can tell he works in construction, yes. can't you? <clears throat> yeah. Well, I do that anyway, Dad. I like to use like local teams, builders. Um, all my teams, Manchester. So. Local spend as well, buy from local suppliers. We do, yeah. All this is done local, so it really has built the, the neighbourhood up. I just wish <laughs> I made that clear to the neighbours. Yeah. I should have I been better in my communication, but you know what? It's a lesson learned and it yeah. won't happen again. Yeah. This room is actually my favourite transformation. So I don't know if you remember, Mum, it ended here. The wall was here and it was tiny. And then he had that horrible bathroom, you know, with the, oh, yeah. the mouldy bath. Oh, there's a lot of regulations, Mum. <clears throat> yeah. Even these doors, for example, they're really heavy because of 30 minute fire doors. You can't have regular doors. Every door or just the main <laughs> yeah, you can normally tell because you can see the joints there and the weight of it. And it's just... Where did we learn that, John? I don't know. Well, your dad's a fireman, isn't he? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm a brother. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, so it was going to be a car park. That was the original plan. But I spoke with a HMO officer and she recommended actually making it into a garden because it would be better living for the tenants. Yeah, definitely. Is there a TPO on the tree? Yeah. Well, I've not inquired because there will be. You can still prune it back away from the, over the roof. Yeah, I was thinking about that, but I think we decided against it. it that can be something in the future for yeah. sure. If it causes any damages to that roof, then yeah, I'll get rid of it. But for now, I think it's fine. It's nice. Sure. All the lights are obviously censored, saving all electricity and make sure that they're always lit up. Another bedroom. So this was going to be an ensuite. It would have fit yeah. in here. Oh, However, yes. yeah, it would have fit meeting HMO yeah. regulations. But again, when I spoke to the HMO yeah. officer, she came around and she said, we're actually going to be up in the size of rooms, the minimum nice. requirement. So it would be fine now, but you'd probably have to change it in like three years. So you'd make the bathroom next door. Yeah. So it is still their own bathroom, but yeah. it's just not in here. It gives them a nice bigger bedroom. This is my favourite room. Yeah, this is nice. Right? Yeah. That's the one I'd go for. No, it's nice, it's good. It's yeah, to a lot higher standard than I thought. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's been a journey, Dad. It's I've been a some, journey. I've got somewhere to come and live. No. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> I tell you what, there's been ups and downs with it though, with walls falling down, dry rot, the outbuilding not having foundations. I think that's the problem with any Victorian house, yeah. you're going to get that, aren't you? Yeah. Because it was Structural 100, 100 years common. old. Yeah. But it stood up for 100 years, it's not going to go anywhere now, is it? So well, it just no, needs not now we've put new foundations out there. Yeah. Better not. <laughs> Bigger. Yeah. Bigger. Bigger. What about a nursing home? Yeah. Maybe. Put your mum in. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard what he's saying? <laughs> Yeah, honestly, I'm so happy with it. My first property development is officially finished and hopefully it's the first of many. And I just want to say a massive thank you to everybody that helped me bring this vision to life. And of course, a massive thank you to everybody that has watched this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and who knows, maybe even learned something along the way. I'll see you in the next one. You got the keys? Don't end without a touch test.